Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be comparing PA versus doctor, the pros and cons of each profession, and why I ultimately chose to go to PA school instead of medical school. So if you're watching this video, you're most likely trying to decide which profession is best for you, PA or physician. So let's first talk about what it takes to get into medical or PA school. Medical school, the requirements are obviously the bachelor's degree and the famous MCAT. The length of schooling is four years of undergrad, four years of medical school, and three to six years of residency, depending on which specialty you choose. And if you want to specialize even more, you can go into fellowship. So that is like 11 to 14 years of schooling if you choose to go the medical route, the medical route. So the degree earned is doctor of medicine or doctor of osteopathic medicine. PA school, the requirements are obviously a bachelor's degree plus clinical hours hours plus the GRE and now they've introduced the PA cap. The length of schooling is four years of undergrad plus two to three years of PA school. The degree earned after you complete PA school is a master's degree. So you do not go by doctor, you go by PAC. That is the title you earn as a PAC. The AAPA would like us to go by PA and then our first name, so PA Daniela. Most PAs honestly just go by their first name, so Daniela. The length of schooling, uh, PA sounded a lot more appealing to me. I really didn't want to spend most of my 20s studying, but with that, you have to lose the title of a doctor which was hard for me at first you know because I spent my whole life thinking that a doctor is what I would become once you realize that becoming a great provider is not due to your title but it's due to how you practice medicine so if you're a great provider it's not because you're a doctor or it's not because you're a PA it's because of the way you practice okay so let's talk numbers let's get down to the nitty-gritty of things Let's talk salary and debt. So this can get very complicated because salaries, obviously, as you guys hopefully know, differ greatly depending on the specialty that you choose as a PA, as a physician. So let's keep it simple and talk about family medicine PAs and family medicine doctors. The average salary for family medicine doctor is $208,000. Residency pay in those three years is 61000 on average. The average debt accumulated is about $251,000. Let's talk about PAs. The average salary for a family medicine PA is $96,000. And the average debt is around $85,000. So for me, this was kind of a big part that swayed in my decision because I didn't have the luxury of having parents or family who would help me pay for my tuition or who would help me pay for my living expenses. So when you look at it, as four years of tuition and four years of living expenses, I calculated myself to owe around $350,000 in debt if I chose the medical school route. So I also realized that interest is a problem. So let's see, 350,000 times 6% interest, that is the interest rate I have now for PA school. $21,000 a year in interest. And that is not getting at any of the debt that you actually owe for medical school. And so when I looked at it in that perspective, as a PA, I will owe around 120,000. That is 7,000, 7,200 a year in interest. Keep in mind, doctors do make more, but that doesn't start until three to six years later when you're done with residency. Pay. I chose the PA route because for me personally, it made more sense. Now, if you have parents who are willing to pay for your medical school or willing to pay for your living expenses, it may make more sense financially for you to just do medical school. So take it with a grain of salt. Let's talk about the roles. What does a PA do and what does a doctor do? What are the differences? Physicians, they can diagnose and treat patients, prescribe medications, perform in-office procedures, and perform their own own surgery. PAs diagnose and treat patients, prescribe medications, perform procedures, but they assist in surgery. You cannot go into the operating room and perform surgery on your own patients as a PA. You need the doctor to be there in the room. So if you want to be a surgeon and you want to lead surgery, PA is probably not the route for you. With that being said, let's get into the autonomy and the limitations of PAs. Doctors, they have complete autonomy. Benefits 
is the physicians don't need to report to anyone. However, this is not always true because a lot of doctors do work for companies and have bosses. But nonetheless, medically speaking, you can call your own shots as a physician. Whereas PAs, you do need to work under the license of a supervising physician. So a lot of people think that this means that PAs are monitored uh, by doctors, like their every move, they can't make a decision, like they can't see their own patients, which is totally not true. Seasoned and experienced PAs ultimately call their own shots all the time. They see their own patients, prescribe their own medications, order their own tests, basically run the show on their own unless they have a doubt or concern. Obviously, as a new grad PA, it's going to be a lot of on the job learning. You are going to need the help as a new grad. You're going to want a mentor to teach you the ropes. But ultimately speaking, the roles of PA and physicians are very similar as a family medicine provider. But when you specialize and get more specialized and get more specialized, I believe you will encounter more limitations as you go more into the specialties. So if you're the person that wants the very high acute stuff, you don't want to be reporting to anyone medically speaking, maybe PA is not the route for you. But for me, I love having someone to turn to when I need help, when I have doubts. I like having that supervising physician. So it depends on the type of person you are. Another thing to mention, with autonomy and all that freedom does come some responsibility. So let's get into that. The malpractice incidents. There is one malpractice payment for every 32.5 PAs for every 2.7 physicians. This means for every 12 PAs that get sued, one doctor gets sued. You get sued a lot more as a doctor and I don't imagine getting sued is any fun. <laughs> Let's talk lateral mobility. One of the things that was super appealing to me when I was deciding whether to pursue PA versus doctor. In PA school, you graduate as a general practitioner, which means that you can choose any specialty to work in once you graduate. So you can basically work two to three specialties at the same time if you wanted to, or you could work in one specialty and later on change your mind to a different specialty. This really helps with like burnout rates and like job satisfaction. You can change it up and not be forced to work in the same specialty once you get bored. Whereas med school, you're required to do a residency and train within that residency. So if you wanted to change specialties as a doctor, it's possible, but you would have to go back into those three to six years of residencies and get that same Okay. This is something to consider because if you don't have your eyes set on a specialty and absolutely know that this is what you want to do for the rest of your life, maybe you want to consider PA. So let's summarize everything for you guys. I found this little summary off the PALife.com. I love this website. I go to it a lot for information. If you haven't already checked it out, I would suggest you do so. Positives of choosing the PA profession. Less time in school. Higher job satisfaction. PA profession is now ranked number one in the US as of 2021. The booming job market. There's a lot of job opportunities for PAs and some offices actually prefer to hire PAs instead of physicians because we are cheaper labor, honestly. We have a better work-life balance. Not only do you finish school earlier and are able to like start a family earlier, but you have less hours on call and you have like the ability to work part-time. It is easier to switch specialties as a PA as we've just discussed and there's very similar roles, especially in the primary care set. The downside, the real cons of choosing the PA profession. You are dependent. You need to work under a licensed physician. You are less recognized internationally, which can be a bummer if you want to like move to other countries and be able to practice medicine. You have to do your research to see where PAs are recognized and where you're able to practice as a PA. You have a lower salary as a PA as compared to doctors. Even though you might be having the same roles, you may work very similar hours, you make a lot less and that's the truth of it. It's a bit harder to start a practice as a PA. You need to like jump through some hoops, you need to get a physician to work over you and all of that stuff. And lastly, it's a newer profession and there's gonna be lots of explaining to do to your patients, to your friends, to your family. Not everybody knows what a PA is. This job isn't easy, it's not settling for PA instead of doctor, a lot of people choose to be become a PA instead of a doctor because of certain aspects of the job that are more appealing. But bottom line, you can't go wrong with any. They're both very noble careers. You're taking care of sick people. So just kind of figure out what fits your lifestyle best and choose that. Please comment below what you're choosing and why. Maybe it could help others around you who are watching this video right now. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.